Here we go, week five of Friday football fever. We just keep on marching through the season. Incredible, already four shows under our belt, but I got a feeling this one might be the best one yet. Seven highlights for you. We're starting with Manatee at Lakewood Ranch. It is time for some football. Madison passes over there. That's Cameron Madison to Jaleel Duncan. And then watch this, going up top. That'll be a touchdown. Jaleel cashes in 7-0 Lakewood Ranch. The home squad, Mustangs, stampede out to an early lead, 450 in the first quarter. Iron Jackson, hit stick there in the backfield. Jaden Corbett now, look out, look out. INT trying to get the momentum back in. It's still scoreless. This is second quarter action. Third down in this play after the intercept. And Jace Berzowski, the left-handed quarterback for Manatee, trying to get to the end zone, but what a tackle. It's going to bring up fourth down. Noah Cummings was there for the stop. They're going for it to tie the game. And they do just that. 7-7 seven, seven is your halftime score. Jump to the money time. Second half action. Jones. There he goes again. Tough man to bring down. Just to tank. I was waiting for him to pull out the Ezekiel Elliott feed me. And then wouldn't you know it, a little dash gets in. Jackson touchdown. They would go for two. So it's 15-7 after the converted two-point conversion. Huge play right here. I was standing at the sticks. And look how long this one goes. Madison. To Daniels, Eli was money. Back down in Northport, had a huge game there, over 100 yards. Gets it down in the red zone. They would settle for the field goal, so it's 15-10, five-point game at the 3.53 mark in the third quarter. But here comes the Hurricanes. Burzowski rolls out to Ty Nevels. Don't let him roll to the left. He is so good. The little play action there. Jones, another one, 22-10. And we're going to show you the play that sealed it. Here we go, Jackson. 85 yards all the way to the house. He took that one all the way back in. You see your final score. Manatee wins 42 to 17. Next game up for you, Paul Meadow taking on Braden River. And wait to see the comeback by BR's Paul Meadow. They got out to a nice surly lead. Braden River, Shaki Atrache going up top. A bomb. What a pass it is right there. He's committed to Rice verbally. Got quite the cannons as Mr. Trace. And now Josh Shiplin going to find Sajel Hickson in the end zone. And the Tigers, they jump out to a 7-0 advantage in this one. They're looking good. Tigers undefeated so far on the season. We saw them take on Port Charlotte a couple weeks back. And it was a great game. Now Palmetto, Javon Mack Johnson. Little INT. And how about the return? Swing it back here to the near sideline. Feet. Don't fail me now. Love the pink socks. We are in October. Hard to believe. October 2nd here. And we're thrilled to be giving you Friday football fever. Tigers 14 Zippo. Parates. Got to get on the board. And you know they're going to drop a big one. Levante Humans. He's a grinder. Almost lost the zebra there. Official just gets out of the way. 14 7. So seven point game. Palmetto would add on. But guess what? Second half. Look at the storm by the home squad. Braden River. They are victorious 34 to 20. They've been hanging around all their games. They get a huge victory. That was a state semifinalist in Palmetto. Next game for you, not quite as close as the previous one. Packed house, Powell Davis Stadium. Oh, it's a great night for football here. Good to have, feel a little bit of cool weather out there. Weston Wolf, yes please. Colin Blaze, it got to touchdown. You're gonna see a whole lot more of those from the gentleman in the green and black. Dylan Turner now. Is going to get the ball, go a little bit up the middle. Scamper, you saw the faithful there at Venice. Powell Davis rocking the max essential. We're just happy that we're having an atmosphere. It's weird seeing these MLB playoffs with no fans. Love that we got fans here for high school football. More points, Colin Blazik. Beautiful pass rolling out to his left. That'll be another touchdown. Keon Sears is in. And why not Stefan Johnson? He cashes this. At this point, if you're counting at home, that's 47-0. The final score, 71-0. Sarasota's held 2 of 14 passing for just 10 yards. Meanwhile, on the other side, the ground game for Venice, 40 carries, 255, and seven touchdowns. Indians roll, look out. They're getting some momentum after that first week loss to IMG. One more for you before we give you a quick puff, a little break. St. Stephen's taking on Northside Christian on the road. Oh, yes, we got it for you right here on SNN. Cole Rogers, long pass to DJ Clark. 
How long is Clark going to be cashing it in for the Falcons? He gets to score at 7-0 St. Stevens later in the quarter. Scott Lynch stays on his feet. And how about that? The tight wire by Julian Long. Nice little completion there. That moves the change. High snap. Look out. Manatee County's liking that one. Get the job done. Matthew, Matthew excuse me, Conco recovers the fumble for the Falcons. And Lynch would go on to his favorite target for a touchdown. But no offense surge there in the late in the second half as Northside Christian they sneak by with a 14-10 victory that is the final score in that one so just a close one but St. Stephen's just does go down we're taking a quick break but don't worry three more games then on top of that we're going to get you all those other out-of-town scores you need to hear don't go anywhere Week five fever, holy mackerel, we just keep on marching through. Plenty more action, we promise it for you, but what a first four set of games. We saw some good ones, we'll revisit them, but first, let's get it going. Riverview, we're going to the Ramble, beautiful new turf. Oh, and the best band in all the land, the Kilty Band is out there taking it all in as they take on Leonard. Little stumbling, bumbling, right up the middle. Chauncey Jones powers his way in, Longhorns. Oh, I like that logo. I like that logo for Leonard. They score, get the early bucket, and then how about going up top? Look out. Will Evans dropping a dime right to Duke Timmons. Takes it on in. They tried to get that combo going a little bit late in the Venice game last week. Couldn't find it. Riverview cashes it in right there. More plays from the Rams. Little third and one, and you'll take that. Uh, you're just trying to fall forward for a couple feet. All the way in for the touchdown. Michael Hayes as Riverview. They come up victorious, 49 to 26. What a bounce back for the Rams as they get the job done. Gibbs taking on Bay Shore, and we're gonna show you a little hurdle and also a play coming right in your face. But first, the safety. Look out for the Bruins. And Warren Brown cashes that in as Bay Shore now up 2-0 early on in the first quarter. And watch this big gainer then. So the defense getting it done. And it looked like it was going to be tackled for a loss in the backfield, but all the way to the outside, getting it down inside the 20. Could not cash it in, though. So still a 2-0 Bruins lead until Gibbs goes Tyrell Johnson over on the left side, made it 6-2. I think we had a missed point after attempt by Gibbs, and that's a 440 mark in the first quarter. Jump to the second, just 90 seconds before halftime, and Gibbs is going to break the heart of Bayshore. They have a nice little play here. Roll on out, and that is tough. It's like giving up a goal late in a hockey game, late in the period, as they jump on top there, 13-2. Michael McNeil. Watch McNeil with the hurdle here. Get on up, young fellow. Nice little run by McNeil. First time we've had a look at Bayshore, as Bayshore's back at Balvan Stadium, but they could not get it done here at home. And this is what I told you about coming right into your kitchen, right to your living room. Sir Darius Sanders, new favorite name. And we're five weeks in, I found it. Sir Darius is brought down right there. Then Sir Darius, another game. But as we showed you, came in a losing effort for Bayshore. Nonetheless, a gritty one. 26-10 is the final. Booker taking on Robinson. This is a wonky play, and it just keeps on going. Looks like it's going to be a tackle for the loss, and the ball's on the ground. What is going on here? Tried the lateral play. It was third and long, and not exactly what they had in mind. No Robinson touchdown, though, but then after the punt, there's Robinson touchdown. Rakeem Parks runs it in. 8-0 Knights as they went for two to jump on top of Booker. Parks, oh, he loves to run it, but that's dangerous. Look where the football is, but still, <laughs> scamper. Looked like the Mike Vick experience back in the... 2000s with that, keeping the ball down low, and a little pop-up right there. Long night for the Tornadoes. Wingfield, he throws the interception, but Booker does get on the board. They go down 29-7 as Robinson gets a victory. That's tough. They had to go on the road up there and unable to come away with a victory. But Booker, I'm telling you what, they're making improvement week after week. Some out-of-town scoreboards for you. Charlotte, they fall to Fort Myers. Still have a good thing going, though. Charlotte off to a nice start here in the 2020 season. Are you kidding me? Out of Door Academy, we were waiting for that one. Look at that final score. Oh, heartbreaker in KB Belton's head coaching debut. I was at practice yesterday. What an effort by the boys. A combined 85 points total. And Southeast battled big. They were down huge early. They got back in the ball game, but poor Charlotte putting up 
52 points. Impressive work there for our Ingmans team. Next set for you, Lemon Bay, a shutout victory. You take that all day if you are the man to raise. We'll revisit you, show Booker. Just fall in that game to Robinson. Cardinal Mooney, 10-20 as they go down to Calvary Christian. The Cougars, they had that big time victory week one. They'll find their footing here. They play some low scoring games. That defense is ferocious for Jared Clark. Next set for you, last one, Manatee, as we had in our game of the week. It was close, 7-7 seven, seven was your halftime score. And then Manatee ends up putting 42 points up and their offense was really flowing. Venice, get out of town, a 71 burger. Uh, in Sarasota, that is one of the tougher places to play in all of Southwest Florida's Powell Davis Stadium. It's a hostile environment, even when they're going 25% capacity. And Braden River, a huge victory over Palmetto, and that's a big one for Shakia Trace and all the fellows there, Kurt Bradley. To go back to our game of the week, uh, the game really turned there, as we said, 7-7, seven, seven, and an incredible, incredible run there in the third quarter. Uh, I can't emphasize enough the drive that Manatee had to open up that third quarter. Two minutes, 50 seconds. And usually you're thinking methodical play. When it was that quick, they ran about four plays, got all the way down in there. The huge Jackson touchdown, and then you had some nice movement outside, just big chunk runs. I like that Kyrie Jones kid. He looks like he can uh, be a lead blocker, and he's also not afraid to run the ball as well. Braden River, the other one that stands out, a huge comeback victory in that one. We had it 20-7 to was our score from the action when we were catching it there at BR, and they're able to come back and get a victory at home. Huge, and we'll emphasize as we do every week, we love these games. They're high magnitude. Every team will make the playoff this year, and we'll give you all those news. As always, you can get that news right on the link below. We'll fill you in. Thank you for joining us week five in the books. We're coming back even stronger next week.